evening and welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and today's date is Wednesday, June 18th, 2014, and here's a look at some of our top stories. What does Dick Cheney, Super Bananas, Pepper Sprain Drones, and Alex Jones predictions all have in common? We'll find out tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. Earlier this week, InfoWars.com sent four reporters down to the Texas border in southern Texas near Brownsville and McAllen to do an in-depth investigation on what is currently going on at the border. Is the Border Patrol being complicit in these? Are people getting stand-down orders not to turn in uh, illegals or to even set them free? Well, the answers that they found shocked me and they should shock you. They have an exclusive interview with an ICE agent. Here's the article, ICE agent blows whistle. Illegals receiving costly taxpayer-funded medical treatments. Now, the video to this is named "Ice Agent Blows Whistle on Disease on Contagious Disease-Ridden Illegals Pouring Over the Border." And I just want to go over a few quotes. We actually played this interview in its entirety at the end of last night's Infowars Nightly News in our Semi Overdrive edition because we got that. It came in a little late, so we just posted it at the end because we thought it was really important information to get out there. But I want to go over a few quotes that the ICE agent said uh, during the interview. First, he said, they're being given orders to appear in front of an immigration judge. If they're going, I don't know, probably not. He also said, certainly morale's an issue. We're letting a lot of people go, a lot of people go. No one wants to see these people being released. And as an American who, who wouldn't have any type of concerns, he said in frustration. The dangers are paramount. And not only that, the medical benefits these people are given is pretty far out, considering we have people here at home that need help. He's referring to the VAs that wait sometimes months, sometimes years to get basic medical attention. Our own Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs went in complaining that he was coughing up blood and he was told, well, he can meet somebody in July. And that was, he went back in May. So nearly two months he's gonna have to wait just to see a doctor. Moving on, when asked whether illegal immigrants receive medical treatment at facilities, the agent answered, absolutely. Whoever is detained goes through a lengthy screening process, checks x-rays, check, uh, check for tuberculosis, things of that nature, and they're treated. And he mentioned that they do get people with tuberculosis. He said there may be a couple that come through to, admit ha to having communicable diseases, but we really don't check for communicable diseases. That's not part of our screening process. That should terrify you that the agents that are sworn to protect our border are actually bringing people in, giving them medical treatment, and then setting them free with a, a piece of paper that says, hey, come, come back to this court date. And these people don't have an address. There's no way to track them down. They're not in the system like the regular citizens like us who can be tracked down when they don't appear for court and get warrants and, and things of that nature. That's not gonna happen in this case. This should terrify you. Not because it's bad that these people are coming here searching for a better way of life, because that's obvious. Why, who wouldn't want to come to this country to search for a better way of life? But there are processes in place, and it's to ensure that we get the people that should be coming in here, the people that are welcome here, the people that are coming through the right processes. We have these things set up for a reason. We don't let just anybody drive. We make people get driver's licenses, and there's a reason for that, and it's just basic safety. And we don't have the money to pay for everybody. We don't have the money to give these people medical care and to give them food stamps. It just, we just don't have it. And that's the way it is. But going back to the VA scandal, which the agent alluded to, this is out of Mail Online. Scandal-plagued VA hospital gave $10 million in bonuses to administrators who covered up wait times for vets that likely led to the deaths of former soldiers. More than 2,100 employees were giving bonuses over a three-year period. And the bonuses were merit-based. Merit-based means they're based on how well you perform the job. So by covering up and putting secret wait lists together, they're actually rewarded for this type of behavior. And it got more. Back in 2011, they were given 2.5 million of bonuses. By 2012, it was 3.5 million and 3.9 million last year. The employees included doctors, nurses, administrators, the people involved in scheduling these people, secretaries, and cleaning staff. Uh, the VA's Inspector General's report found that 1,700 veterans seeking treatment at the VA hospital were at risk of being lost or forgotten and being kept off the official waiting list. Wow, imagine that. And there's one of the perpetrators there, Sharon Hellman, and two others were placed on administrative leave 
last month following the allegations that some veterans may have died waiting for appointments. Hellman, who earned $169,000 annual salary, had a $4,900 bonus from last year that was rescinded by VA officials. Wow, she made $169,000 last year by putting people on secret waiting lists and keeping people from getting treatment. But what I'm about to show you is really going to freak you out. And this is off uh, the website. It's called Open the Books. And they list veteran salaries, uh, veteran administrators' salaries out of Phoenix. And this is just from 2010. Look at Harold Dossett. $324,000 a year. Look at Kenneth Scarlett, $304,000. Look at Danny Kilpatrick, $301,000. Look at Durga Powell, $297,000. These are all in the Veterans Health Administration. I don't know what their actual job titles are, but this was four years ago. And these people are being paid this much money. You think they would develop a system to get veterans care in a timely manner. But no, they don't do that. What they do is move the paper over here, put them in a secret waiting list, pretend they don't exist, dismiss their concerns, make fun of them. You've seen the reports from Joe Biggs. He's outlined it all. It's really, really disturbing. But it's not just the VA administrators who can't keep their S straight. It's also the IRS. You've heard about the lost emails now going back to six different employees where they just can't find emails talking about uh, the type of corruption that was going on there where they were targeting Tea Party officials. For over a year and a half now, the House of Representatives has been investigating the IRS to see if they singled out Tea Party groups for political persecution. A large part of that investigation are incriminating emails that the IRS is now saying have disappeared. Is it credible that Lois Lerner and now six other IRS officials would lose all of their emails due to a computer disk crash? Now, some people might find that credible because that's happened to them with their personal computers, but we're not talking about personal computers. You found one? Did I? It looks like this one is deducting for medical payments covered by insurance. This, we suspect, is how a great many people think of ADP, Automatic Data Processing the newest tax tool of the Internal Revenue Service, and a new dimension in tax administration. The IRS has policies, procedures, and technology that you don't have on your personal computer. We're told that the electronic records weren't archived for very long, but the IRS's own record-keeping requirements for us treats electronic records the same as paper records and requires that we keep records for three to seven years indefinitely if fraud is suspected. But IRS policy says that official emails are federal records and they're required to be printed and stored separately and permanently. And the emails don't just reside on a hard disk. These emails pass through servers and the IRS has a huge IT department to ensure that data is backed up and preserved. And reporter Cheryl Atkinson reports that an IRS official told her that email is backed up with something called a RAID. A RAID is a redundant array of independent disks. In other words, two physical hard drives are put together in one enclosure. Information written to one is also written to another. Now what that means is that although a single hard drive might have a mean time between failure of five years, that would give you a probability of about one in 78,000 that this would fail. When you put them together in a RAID configuration that's mirrored for security, you wind up with a mean time between failure of 500 years. In billions. In other words, it's not credible, even if they weren't mirrored, that all seven of these would fail and lose the most critical time period that they're looking for. I say the IRS officials need to be held to the same standard that they hold the rest of America to. For example, they should be guilty until they can prove that they're innocent. They should be required to retain data for seven years, just as we are, with no limit for criminal activity. Lois Lerner should be compelled to self-incrimination, just as we are. And we should shut them down financially, not just cutting their budget by 15%. The emails in question relate to Lois Lerner and other IRS officials conspiring to punish political opponents with criminal charges. But there's also a criminal conspiracy to cover up illegal activity. And as an IRS official has pointed out, laws have been broken during an alleged cover-up 
that are much easier to prove than the original act. If you remember back to Watergate, the articles of impeachment didn't come after Richard Nixon for breaking into an office. It came after him for covering up information about those who did and for using the IRS against political enemies. Now, if the House Republicans don't prosecute, they are implicit in this criminal conspiracy to cover up. So just remember when you're filling out your taxes every year, you have to keep your records for up to seven years so the IRS can go back and snoop at any time through those records. But they don't have to keep track of their own emails. And they're not big. These aren't giant files. These are small text files. These aren't large, giant video files that we deal with here at InfoWars and in Prison Planet. So it just really makes me wonder how this could happen with all the redundancies and the RAID disks and, and everything else and the computer experts that they have and the forensic experts they have to go back and look in other people's computers, yet they can't find the emails. No, nobody's lying. Don't worry about it. But you have to follow all their rules. You have to incriminate yourself. <laughs> Just makes you wonder. Let's move on to drone news. Another one out of the mail online. Flight of the tiny RoboFly. World's smallest drone weighs less than a gram and navigates using light-sensitive eyes. The RoboFly has a carbon fiber body weighing 106 milligrams, a fraction of a gram. It has a pair of flapping wings, which are powered by electronic muscles. And they say this device could be used in search and rescue operations to squeeze through collapsed rubble, monitor environmental conditions, and pollinate crops. I think it's really amazing the amount of technology that's being you know, poured into drones. And it kind of, when I read this article, it made me think back to a National Geographic piece that was released a few years ago where they showed tiny fly robots that were flying around and that they could get into places where they couldn't be seen or, or readily noticed and, and even attack people using a kamikaze style explosive device built into them and they could take out attackers. Uh, in this case, it was a sniper. But all this goes back to, do you really think this RoboFly is gonna be used for uh, pro-humanity applications? Well, it might be, a few companies might do that. But more often than not, you're gonna see groups like the CIA and DARPA using these technologies to kill people and to get spy information. That's the, the future of drone technology. Like this drone here out of a Steve Watson article. Riot control, drone to shoot pepper spray bullets at protesters. A drone that is capable of firing 400 rounds of pepper spray and paintballs, as well as employing blinding lasers and loudspeakers to deter protesters, has been developed and sold to an undisclosed company following a demonstration at a trade show in London. It's called the Skunk Riot Control Copter. And it's equipped with four high-capacity paintball barrels firing up to 20 bullets per second with 80 pepper bullets per second stopping any crowd in its tracks. Wow, that's 80 bullets per second coming out of those wings. Pretty scary stuff. Uh, Noel Sharkey, chair for the International Committee for Robot Control Arms, it's a campaign group, he described it as a creepy authoritarianism and the suppression of protest. He also mentioned that firing plastic balls or bullets from the air will maim and kill. And you might think, oh, no, they're just, you know, paintball bullets. They're not going to hurt you. Let's take a look at this live leak post. Veteran, veteran Marine fighting for his life after being shot in the face with gas canister at an Occupy Oakland clash. This is a Marine veteran who was protesting um, the cops beating up people in Oakland during Occupy. He was hit in the face with a gas canister. It doesn't look like he's doing too well. It looks like a little more than crowd control. Well, that's the future you're gonna be facing with these drone technologies. It's not a future of happiness and search and rescue and, and empowerment. It's gonna be command and control while the commanders and controllers sit back in a control room piloting drones, attacking people who have had their jobs taken away, who've had their pensions taken away, who are basically at, the, at their wits end. That's the future. And even uh, people like one of the heads of Tesla, Elon Musk, is worried about this type of scenario being developed, especially with artificial intelligence, which is where drones are going. We had, we had this uh, article where there, there's going to be autom autonomous drones flying around Afghanistan, picking out targets and firing without anybody telling them to. So don't worry, that technology is coming home here. He believes it's